Now, what is the role of high resolution CT scan? You have a patient who has dyspnea, who has dry cough, X-ray chest looks normal. So, this patient is symptomatic. Then, whether you do HRCT because you want to see whether there is ILD or there is a ILD. Now, is there an ILD? Characterize the ILD. Find out whether it is reversible or irreversible. If it is confusing, then you have to tell how to do biopsy, whether it is transbronchial or open lung biopsy. And last but not the least, to follow up the treatment, especially if NSIP, steroid given and it is resolving, or if it is IPF, it is drastically increasing because the survival rate is very poor in an IPF. Without knowing the history, a chronic histos, uh, HP and an IPF and a chronic sarcoid will all look the same. You have to also, if possible, get a previous CT. If possible, if the patient has. Okay? Now let's start. All of you know that interstitial pneumonias, seven types when they started, though they are pneumonias, they are not infected. This was the initial seven types. Then recently they were described into DIP, AIP, NSIP, RBILD, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, LIP plus there is UIP in it. What has happened is now they are separated into smoking related and non-smoking related. So RBILD is a smoking related. Yeah. Now again I am saying interstitial pulmonary fibrosis. We do tend to give this diagnosis but this is pathology or histopathological diagnosis. What we are describing is a UIP pattern. Now when it comes to IPF UIP is IPF, but UIP pattern is not IPF. Got it? Now, what I am describing here is there in your books is IPF. Commoner in males, more than, usually 50 or more than that, progressive dyspnea and pulmonary hypertension. You have to remember how does it look. So whatever the patterns are there, they are usually basal, that is lower lobes subplural predominant so there is an apico basal consistent finding of septal thickening honeycombing traction bronchiectasis and bronchiolectasis ground glass opacity is less common it is commoner with NSIP but again I told you when you know this is a case of IPF that is it has all the signs of irreversibility and it or she gets a ground glass opacity that means there is a exacerbation and there is an acute alveolitis in a chronic case. So this is inter and intralobular septal thickening. As of now, there is subtle bronchiectasis, bronchiolectasia. What happens is as the bronchi go peripheral, they converge, the walls converge. You have no business of seeing such big bronchi in the periphery. So this is traction bronchiectasis. As of now, there is no honeycombing formation, but there is no ground glass also. Now, same patient, the basal segments is showing honeycombing. The moment you get honeycombing, that means this is irreversible. In cases of IPF, there are certain things that you should keep in mind. Lymph nodes can occur. Fuses can rupture, forming either a small loculated pneumothoraces or even the mediastinal honeycombing can rupture and form a small pockets of pneumomediastinal. There are certain IPFs which within two months can really deteriorate. So few pointers you have to keep in mind. So you have to look if there is additional esophageal dilatation in this case. Okay, then your IPF diagnosis is wrong. Your UIP pattern diagnosis should come, not UIP, UIP pattern. Then you can say that this UIP pattern is related to maybe scleroderma because the esophagus is dilated. Now this is a full blown chronic irreversible UIP pattern but male patient more than 50 years so safely can call it IPF provided you also have the a little clinical backup you have bilateral basal honeycombing you have honeycombing between architectural distortion mainly in the lower lobes so this is a typical chronic stage of IPF now let's go to this case what do you have here is this honeycombing? Yes. Is this a pico-basal gradient? Yes, because there is more in the basis than in the apices. There is traction bronchial basis. There are these cyst formation, but there is there are no three layers, but here there are three layers. So again, this is 
architectural distortion in bilateral lower lobes to a lesser extent in the upper lobes. But when it comes to UIP, there are these probable, typical or non-consistent UIP. So this is a very important newer thing that has come and a lot of chess physicians know about it. And they will ask you, is this probable, is it typical or non-consistent? Let's go on to case. What do you have here? You have a Pisces, honeycomb mate, intertubular septal thickening and there is loss of architecture especially in upper lobe. So what will you call this as? Is there basal environment? Not much. So this is a UIP pattern or typical pattern. See this? This is a coronal image showing you bilateral honeycombing in upper lobes. There are changes in the lower lobes but much less. So this is an atypical UIP pattern. Again showing you the lateral film of right and left lung. So any guesses? This is a atypical UIP pattern. So you do not call this IPF. You call it UIP atypical. Why atypical? Because it's not involving the basis. So this was a stage 4 sarcoid. 